What, um, what do you think about Micheletti? I think that if there ever was the right guy at the right place at the right time, it's Micheletti. Why? He's very strong. He's, he understands what needs to happen. He's not caving into international pressure. He's done a very good job of, of telling the Honduran people that we're going to have to go through some hard times and, until we go through this process. Eventually, the new government of Honduras will have to be recognized. It has to be. You can't ignore Honduras forever. Um, I think it will probably happen with the elections. You know, right now, the U.S. is saying, well, we might not recognize the elections. Any time a country in history that has moved out of a uh, democracy, even though I don't think Honduras has, the only way to get back in democracy is to have an election. You have to have an election. These candidates that are running for president were selected before Zelaya left office. The date of the election was set before Zelaya left office. This whole thing was done while Zelaya was in power. There's no reason, no logical reason to, to not recognize those elections. Have you ever met Zelaya? Uh, no, I did not. Um, uh, do you know any supporters of Zelaya? I do. Um, what do they say? Well, they, they, they say that he's a champion of the poor, that he was doing all these great things, and, and uh, it just, it, their arguments really don't hold a lot of, a lot of water with me. I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, in terms of Zelaya, he wants to come back to this country. What do you think about that? And just serve out his term until November, or actually until January. The election's in November, and he would serve his term until January. What about that? Well, um, I don't think the Honduran people will ever accept him back. I don't think that the Honduran people want him back. I know that the government, which is the same government that was in place under him, there's only one person changed in the whole government, and that was Zelaya. The rest of the government is in place. The Congress that was elected is in place. The Supreme Court's in place. Everything's in place except for one man. So they've stated, stated very clearly that they won't accept him. It's impossible for me to see how he can govern if he were to come back. He has no credibility in the country. Well, Zelaya's got the United States on his, on his side. He's got the uh, European Union. He's got so many countries. I mean, Zelaya's got all the countries, and they're all saying the Honduras, take this guy back. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. I think that... Uh, um, I think that the OAS uh, has a, a set agenda, and I think that they made a, a decision very early. I mean, within minutes, literally within, within minutes of, the, uh, of Zelaya being taken out, they were yelling, coup, 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 Zelaya's got to come back. The thing that's been disheartening for me is, is that their, Obama in particular campaigned. He said, you know, he'll talk to our enemies. He'll talk to everybody. The only, you know, the only way you can solve a problem is to talk about it. They called it a coup. They called for Zelaya's reinstatement before they even said one word to the new government. Without any explanation of what's going on, they made a quick decision. And I think they're finding, the whole world, I think, is finding it difficult to back off from that. Although we're seeing some, the European Union uh, a few days ago said that they were going to include Honduras in all the trade negotiations, and they specifically said they did not want to isolate Honduras. Those are good things. Those are beginning steps. Yeah. What's the impact of the travel advisory for Americans here in Honduras and the cutoff of the aid? Huge. The aid, uh, aid is a big impact f primarily for the poor uh, on the mainland uh, uh, well, and here as well on the islands. Uh, those projects uh, don't really help the gringos. They don't help the foreigners that live here. They help the, the Hondurans, the, especially the poor people. Uh, the travel advisory has a huge impact on us here. We live on Roatan. It's a beautiful island, uh, very tranquil. You guys have been here for a couple of days. You can see that you know, there's no issues here. There's no war. There's no, uh, no problems here at all. It's very peaceful. But that travel advisory has cut our tourism numbers down immensely. This is the slowest we've ever seen it here on the island. And that means that our companies are losing money. Uh, you're seeing companies having to lay people off, um, which obviously hurts the, you know, the, the lower, uh, poorer classes as well. Um, you know, it's a, it's a huge impact. And there's no valid reason for the travel advisory. The travel advisory supposedly is for security. There's no security issue here. It's simply to put pressure on, on Honduras. Do you have a message for the American people who are sitting at home uh, watching this? Um... Come down to Honduras. If you want to support the little country that could, buy a ticket, come down. We have, we're on the second largest reef in the world. The diving's beautiful, the beaches are great, the weather's wonderful. Come down, spend a week with us, see for yourself. Support the economy, but uh, most of all, help support Honduras. How about the message for President Obama? Take a hard look at what, what really happened here in Honduras. 
realized that what they did was they held up their own constitution. They made a conscious decision to not cave in to Chavez's advances. They made a conscious decision to, to enforce their constitution and to make sure that they, they lived within the rule of law. I personally think that Honduras should be congratulated on what they've done. I think that I'm very proud of them. I'm prouder of Honduras right now than I am of the states.